Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro, and I sit on the board of trustees of the International Menopause Society. And today I'm joined by Dr. Pauline Mackey. Dr. Mackey, can you tell our audience who you are and what you do? Yes, I'm Pauline Mackey. I'm professor of psychiatry, psychology, and OBGYN at the University of Illinois at Chicago and a proud member of the IMS Board of Trustees. So Dr. Mackey joins us today because not only is she an expert in the area, but she's co-authored a paper called Brain Fog and Menopause, and it helps your healthcare professional guide themselves in terms of decision-making and what to tell you about your brain and your thinking. But for many women, as they transition through menopause, they'll notice that there's a change in their menopause, that there's a change in their memory related to their menopause. So the question for women is, is, is this menopause that I'm going through and then menopause that I'm going to be living in responsible for the change in my memory? And what does it mean as I move forward in the menopause? It's such an important and such a common question. So let's talk a little bit about what we know about menopause and memory and brain fog. It's not in women's head. We know that as women transition through the menopause, if we follow large groups of women, in fact, women do show changes in their objective cognitive performance. They perform differently on cognitive tests as they transition through the menopause. And the good news for women is the large amount of this, most of this bounces right back after the menopause transition is over. So that suggests that it's a time limited experience for women. There may be some lingering issues with memory, but they're small in a limited clinical significance. So it's not in your head if you're experiencing this, it's real. And for the large majority of women, this is temporary. So the next question that I think women want to know is, is, is it related to the fact that I don't have any estrogen or is it just because I'm getting older and it's coincident with me entering menopause? Do we really know what's responsible for the changes that women do complain of in and around this stage? Yeah, so what contributes to these memory problems at midlife can differ from one woman to another. There are certain factors that we have in common. We all lose our estrogen as we transition through the menopause, and clearly there's a role for estrogen. Uh, but that's not the only factor that can contribute to this. A big, big player are hot flashes. And so in our work, we've shown that hot flashes contribute directly to these memory problems. They affect the brain and the brain areas that subserve your memory function. And so these hot flashes and treating them can be really important. Another factor, and this isn't a surprise, you don't need to have a PhD in neuroscience to know this, sleep affects our memory, right? So sleeping better is really important for our brain health. And hot flashes and sleep disturbance are related for a lot of women who have pretty bothersome hot flashes. They wake up after they have a hot flash. In fact, research shows, imagine this, 75% of hot flashes trigger an awakening. So these two things are coupled. So let's treat the hot flashes there. And then of course, this is all in the background of an aging brain. Our brains are experiencing the normal changes that both men and women experience. And so that's when we have to talk about other things that we have to do just to maintain our brain health, keep it healthy uh, and the like. And then finally, the other thing that's really important is mood. So if we're depressed, we don't think as clearly, and we need to make sure that we, we get those uh, depressive symptoms and those anxiety symptoms treated as well. So if I'm a woman who's transitioning through menopause and entering menopause, and I've noticed that I have a change in my memory, firstly, does it mean that it's inevitable that it's going to get worse with time and I really have to worry about dementia? And the second question is, is should I be asking to be put on estrogen? This is an important question because women are getting really mixed messages about whether or not they should be taking hormone therapy, both at the menopause and after the menopause. So let's talk a little bit about that. If a woman has hot flashes, which is of course the main reason why women should take a hormone therapy, right? That's its major indication then it's very likely that it will in fact improve her memory performance. So that makes a lot of sense because we have this link between hot flashes and, and memory disturbance. What about the women who don't have those hot flashes? 
Well, there has been four really, really good trials, large trials that have shown zero, zero effect um, on cognition in those women. So there isn't a lot to indicate that estrogen will benefit cognitive function in those women. For the women who have a depression that was a new onset at the perimenopause, um, they might in fact benefit from estrogen because it might suggest a signal that um, they're estrogen sensitive, but that's not, not the majority of women. So the idea is if, if you're symptomatic for other menopausal things, you try estrogen, it may very well help you to think more clearly and remember. But we distinguish that from the use of hormone therapy in the long term to prevent dementia. As I said, there's a lot of mixed messages there. So does it prevent dementia? The literature really does not show a reliable message that there is a role for estrogen here. If we take the very largest study that followed the largest numbers of women, 27,000 women for 18 years in a randomized trial in science, we call that a really good study. That study suggests that you would need to treat 2,004 women to prevent one case of dementia. So does a woman wanna go on a therapy if she's very likely to be among the 2,003 women who wouldn't benefit? I don't think so. And so we have to distinguish the role of hormone therapy at the time of the menopause and then afterward. Now, some women continue to have hot flashes. Many women continue to have bothersome hot flashes for more than a decade after their final menstrual period. And the science suggests that those should be treated because that sleep disturbance may in fact be a strong risk factor for Alzheimer's disease. So let's, let's treat those too if the woman continues to have the hot flashes. But in general, Dr. Shapiro, there's really no role uh, for hormone therapy in the primary prevention of Alzheimer's disease or other dementias. And I think it's also reassuring for women to hear what you're saying, that having that brain fog or change in memory in and around menopause is fluctuating, that there's a good chance right. that this is going to come back and not an inevitable progression to what I think a lot of women worry about, which is some form of dementia. Yeah, that's right. And, and women are being told sometimes that menopause is the first step in their course for dementia. Logically, let's think about that. How many women who live to age 80 transition through menopause? All of them. How many of them get Alzheimer's disease? A minority of those women. So there can't be this causal link between menopause and Alzheimer's disease. It just logically doesn't make a lot of sense. Now for some women, it may very well be a risk factor. Maybe those are the women who continue to have moderate to severe hot flashes um, during their life. But currently there's just no good data. And yes, women should be reassured that after that final menstrual period, when the brain gets used to the new hormonal reality that it's living in, cognitively women are gonna experience a rebound. And that's very reassuring. It is. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.